We heard from uh, Commissioner La Tourette this morning that 46% of our greenhouse gas emissions from New Jersey come from the transportation sector. As part of that solution, or to address the transportation sector, New Jersey has proposed to adopt the California's uh, Advanced Clean Truck Roll Act um, to basically electrify uh, our heavy duty or our truck fleets, including heavy duty uh, vessel or vehicles in New Jersey. Um, I'm also told that the Biden administration is looking to possibly have an act program on a federal level. Here to talk about the feasibility of, of, of the act uh, a proposal and what the Biden administration do, is doing is Dawn Fenton. Dawn is the Vice President of Government Affairs and Public Affairs at Volvo Group North America. She has been with Volvo Group for 10 years and has responsibility for federal government relations as well as California policy issues. Prior to joining the Volvo Group, Dawn uh, worked for the Diesel Technology Forum and ABB Inc. Dawn has worked in the governmental relations field for over 25 years across a range of energy, environment, sustainability, foreign policy, and trade-related issues in the public, private, and nonprofit sectors. She received her Master's of Science in Foreign, foreign Service from Georgetown uh, a School of Foreign Service and her BA from Tufts. Uh, I welcome Dawn. Thank you, Dawn. Thank you so very much, and uh, thank you for um, thank you for the the introduction. I'm hoping everybody can hear and and see me well. Uh, I'm sorry that I'm not able to be there with you in person. I would have would have liked that, but uh, I'm glad that at least this opportunity uh, could could be made available, so I could still join you today and, and share a little bit about um, what Volvo Group is doing in this transition towards electrification of heavy duty vehicles and some thoughts about uh, how we as a nation should go forward in that, that way. So um, thank you again. Um, so I'm gonna be looking at the heavy duty sector. Um, and just by way of, of background, uh, Ray gave my uh, bio, but uh, yes, I am with Volvo Group. I've been with Volvo Group for a little over 10 years. And I spent a lot of time focusing on um, regulatory issues, uh, both at the federal and state level, and also on electrification, because this is such a, a growing and really um, ex exciting and, and complex issue. So first, let me start with just a, uh, a quick note on uh, Volvo Group. Uh, I'll take all of uh, 30 seconds, you know, just basically wanted to let people know that Volvo Group North America is the heavy duty side of Volvo. Uh, we do not have Volvo cars. That is a completely separate company. So in the Volvo group, we have uh, heavy duty trucks, heavy and medium duty trucks, as well as uh, buses, uh, motor coach and tr uh, transit buses. We have construction equipment. We have marine engines. Um, you can see by the map that we are predominantly an East Coast based uh, company and um, we have uh, about 17,000 employees. Uh, even though we are headquartered in Sweden, we're a European-based company, the, uh, the United States is our single largest country market. Um, and we're very proud of the fact that we are the only US, uh, the only truck manufacturer that produces 100% of our North American sales in the United States. So with that, let me move on. Um, we are very committed to moving towards a Z future. And uh, we're, we're committed to the, the goals of the Paris Climate Accord. We uh, are interested in, in certainly striving along with everybody else to stay to 1.5 degrees uh, increase. Um, and in light of those, those goals, and, and, and Volvo has always had a very strong environmental uh, commitment, um, but we made some announcements uh, last year the end of last year that uh, we were committed to having 100% of our products, our vehicle products, be fossil free by 2040. And uh, within that, as an interim goal, to really have 35% uh, of them be electric by 2030. So clearly, uh, battery electric is where we are focused right now. However, we are also um, committed and see a role to uh, hydrogen and, and fuel cell vehicles. We are part of a, a joint venture called Cell Centric, 
which is with Daimler trucks to actually further develop fuel cell technology. And we anticipate having fuel cell trucks available and uh, beginning to come onto the, the roads and, and see them in the second half of this decade. So um, as we as I mentioned, you know, this is this is something that's that's exciting. We've been working on this for a while, and Volvo already has electric vehicles and equipment on the roads operating in commercial uh, operations today. You can see here our Mack truck brand. Um, we have an all-electric refuse truck, and uh, it is currently operating in New York City. In fact, New York City recently just purchased another seven. Uh, trucks. Um, we also have had a uh, truck operating with Republic Services in North Carolina. So um, this, is not, this, this is not a technology of tomorrow. This is a technology of, of today. And in addition to our Mack truck brand, um, we also have a Volvo truck uh, brand as well, a, a Class A truck, our Volvo VNR. And a large part of where that came from was out of a very unique project uh, that we have operating in California called the Volvo Lights Project. Now, this is a very busy slide. There's a lot of information that we're trying to get on this, but I wanted to just take a minute to talk about this because this has been so fundamental for, for Volvo and us, uh, helping us to really bring this technology to market and to help us to kind of get it right, for lack of a better way to say it. Um, the Volvo Lights project has been going on since 2019. It was awarded, I believe it was in late 2018. Um, it's, it's funded by the California Air Resources Board through their Clim California Climate Investments Program, along with Volvo and, and, and the South Coast uh, Air Quality Management District. And it really is a project that is uh, that's seeking or, or sought to try and prove the commercial success of battery electric trucks and to really show what is going to be necessary to make this transition. So it's a unique project in many ways. It's unique both in terms of the size of the project, unique for California and unique for Volvo. It's a $90 million project. It's the largest partially public funded project that, that Volvo has done globally. And one of the largest, I think the second largest that uh, California Resources Board has ever done. It's unique in terms of the number of project partners there. You can see that there's, there's um, 13 or 14 project partners that exist. Um, and it really, rep these partners represent the whole array of stakeholders that are necessary to make electric vehicles a success in the marketplace. You've got fleets, you've got dealers, you have um, utilities you have equipment providers, you have community colleges who are doing, a, a, doing um, training programs for tomorrow's uh, maintenance and technicians. Um, we even have a, a community development organization reach out that is helping to spread the world, spread the word about um, this transition and, and what it means uh, for local communities. And of course, uh, all across the bottom there, you can see some of the um, uh, deliverables of the project. It's actually 25 battery electric trucks that it's bringing onto the, onto the market. Um, cargo handling equipment, uh, number of public chargers, heavy duty public chargers. I mentioned the, the community colleges, solar generation. Our, the two uh, fleets involved have in, have installed solar panels on their warehouses to help uh, provide the energy for the trucks that they are running. Um, and we're also involved with the ports of LA and Long Beach, and you can see there the map of where that project is going. So this project has been critical to us, um, not only in terms of, you know, it's obviously we're bringing the trucks for it, but it's, it's learning about the whole ecosystem that's necessary for, for this to be success, be a success. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of details talking about this very specific project, but just from a very high level, I mean, there are a number of things that we've learned. And actually, uh, a colleague of mine and myself recently had a, a paper published where I went into a little more detail about some, some lessons on bringing these advanced, uh, these uh, heavy duty electric trucks to market. But some of the initial uh, lessons are that, you know, it really is critical that uh, fleets engage with utilities early on. Um, 
because, and it's important in the design process, not only in terms of making sure the utilities know and the fleets know how much, can assess how much uh, power they're going to need, but what investments are going to be needed in their, um, at their location, and even the design of it. I mean, fleets, fleets with warehouses or a depots, they're not used to thinking about where they have to have to fuel. But that's a real serious consideration when you're talking about putting in new infrastructure. And doing so, it's a, it's, it's a complicated process. There's no single lessons, really. It uh, is a site-specific uh, calculation that needs to be made. And, and oftentimes, the charging infrastructure takes longer to install than, than the trucks. I mean, the lead time on the trucks can be in terms of months. It can be over a year to get your infrastructure in place. And that depends in part on what the situation is where you are. I mentioned there's lots of different partners that need to be involved and not everybody's aligned. Um, you know, we have people who are operating, uh, you know, everybody has their own constituencies and um, this is kind of a new constituency for utilities to be focused on you know, the importance of, of charging for vehicles. You know, the utilities is driven by the rate payer, and we heard that earlier today, and as it should be. But there's, there's you know, it's so it's a new kind of focus on, relatively speaking, uh, for the transportation sector. Um, there's a lot of unfamiliarity. Um, and so that it's a learning process. It's just recognizing that we all have learning curves that we're going up, uh, we're, we're following. And so for that reason, things take longer. And I, it's really important. I don't know how many fleets there are in the, in the uh, audience, but whether you're a fleet or even a government entity, it's really important to have a single point of contact, especially because when you've got companies that could be bureaucratic, you have government entities that are, of course, bureaucratic. Um, if you have too many kind of cooks in the kitchen or not, not a single point of contact, it's very easy for things to get um, even more complicated than they need to be. So I just wanted to share a couple early lessons there um, uh, as, as we make this transition. Now, I mentioned that Volvo has, I mentioned before the Mac has a vehicle available. Volvo's VNR is available now. In fact, we had it, we had our commercial launch almost a year ago now. You know, and this is a truck that you can buy today. You can get delivered within a few months time, a range of 150 miles. Um, we have had orders uh, that we've announced, and in fact, we've had more users than even the, the fleets that have purchased this because as part of this lights project, those 25 trucks I mentioned, several of them were being made available for short-term lease opportunities for different fleets so they could try them out and test them out and dip their toe in the water and get a better sense of how these would operate in their, these would work in their operations. Um, most of the most of the work on, on electric vehicles has been out, at least in the heavy duty side, has been out in uh, in California and on the West Coast. However, we did announce recently our first sale uh, on the East Coast uh, with Manhattan Beer in in New York. So um, lots of movement here. But if we really want to see this transition continue, it's really important to have government support. Um, I, as I mentioned, this is a whole new paradigm shift. You know, fleets, this is very different than, you know, a regulation that has come into effect that requires a, um, you know, it's a, it's a new type of emissions control technology. I mean, you're talking about a whole new way of operating. And there's, there's some government support that is going to be needed for, for some time to help make this transition. Um, probably the biggest concern is in terms of incentives to help. I mean, these vehicles are significantly more expensive than your diesel equivalent vehicle. They can be two, sometimes three times more expensive, depending on the application, whether you're talking about a body that's needed, you know, say a refuse truck or other types of trucks, but they're at least two times more. Um, and that's a cost that a lot of fleets can't undertake. Not to mention the fact that the charging infrastructure can be very expensive as well. Now, fleets have a business to run. They're, they're in business to do what they do and, to, and they have to deliver their products. They, they are not in the grant writing business, um, you know, number one. Number two, you know, our, goal, our point is to try and encourage to, for government entities to make the access to this uh, support as easy as possible. 
Um, this is a, a message that we share with California and, and they're moving in this direction that you know, if you have one governmental entity that has uh, incentives for charging infrastructure, another one for the vehicles, you've got fleets that are trying to figure this out, who do they go to, different applications, the timing on them is off. Um, it, it's, it, it really is difficult for them. So the degree to which the state can make it easy for fleets will help that in that transition. Um, also will help to encourage greater synchronization between your state policies and local policies and various requirements. Um, and uh, a real focus, uh, my last point here is, and whether it's utility funding or just, just generally speaking, to not just equate the, you know, the, the light duty with the heavy duty. Heavy duty chart, heavy duty vehicles and the, the purchase decisions behind them are very different than the purchase decisions behind light duty vehicles. The infrastructure for heavy duty is very different than light duty. You know, we've been moving towards light duty electrification for several years. That's great. Um, but it's not just a simple lesson that to move over, well, so now everything's just bigger and more expensive for heavy duty trucks. It's actually quite different and it's really important to, to keep, that, keep that in mind. So with that, um, you know, I want, I, I, this makes it sound difficult, and it is difficult, but that doesn't mean that we're not behind it, we're not supportive of it. As I start, I mentioned several minutes ago, I mean, Volvo is 100% committed to moving in this direction. Um, you know, we don't intend to sell anything but fossil-free vehicles by 2040. But we're very concerned that this is a very complex process, and that, that if we don't do it in the right way, it's going to get further delayed and there's going to be even, uh, there's going to be negative consequences. And it's for that reason that not just Volvo, but Volvo together with our other OEM competitors um, have formed a new coalition. And this new coalition is called Partners for a Zero Emission Vehicle Future. Um, and the, the, the goal of this, this organization is to really promote the, this transition and help it succeed. You know, the, the members, and this was founded by the four major truck OEMs, Volvo, Daimler, Navistar, and Packard. We are all committed to a future of zero emission vehicle, a transportation, a commercial transportation zero emission vehicle future. Um, we think it's the right thing to do. We are committed to it and we wanna make sure that it's done in a way that builds both the environmental benefits that we all need and care about and protecting our globe as we deal with climate change issues while also doing so in a smart way from an environmental perspective and, and for the business community. So the, the best way to do this is really from a national approach. Um, there are, um, and uh, Ray mentioned this in the introduction, we heard earlier this morning that New Jersey is moving forward to adopt uh, California's advanced clean truck regulation. And we don't think that that is necessarily the best way forward. That was a regulation that California adopted for based on their particular state fleet of trucks that has a large percentage of drayage trucks. Um, California has done other policies to a low carbon fuel standard and other, you know, a drayage fleet to, uh, turnover uh, regulation. They have other regulations on, on for transit vehicles. And on top of it, they have committed hundreds of millions of dollars to pay for the incentives. And so while that whole package works in California, it would be the same in any other state. You really need a whole package of all those things. And so just adopting one part of that, which is the California Advanced Clean Truck Regulation, is not going to be suited for success. And it, we risk getting a different set of you know, regulations across, across the country you know, on a state-by-state -state basis. Instead, we believe that the best approach is through a coordinated and collaborative approach between federal and state policy, that we work towards, we have state national standards, and that there's be a national approach to addressing some of this, this transition and the climate change hurdles in terms of getting incentives for the vehicles, incentives for the infrastructure. We've heard earlier today about what's happening at the federal level. Volvo Group and, and the other members of this coalition are working hard to try and get 
those provisions in there, and that this at the this national effort should be supplemented by regional and state efforts to um, do more in this area to to bring additional funding to help pay for um, you know whether you know focused uh, um, deployment in areas whether it's in disadvantaged communities to deal with EJ EJ issues or you know whatever the state's needs are to, to determine that. And that really is the way to move forward. Um, here you can see the, the, as I mentioned, the four, four OEM partners uh, have, have launched this, this, uh, this partnership. And if you're interested in getting more information about it, you can see we have a website there that you can visit. Um, you can email us and um, we'd, we'd welcome interest from any and all uh, entities. There's no cost to joining. It's not rather a commitment and, and uh, to you know, the vision that I've outlined. And um, with that, I will stop and happy to take any questions if there's time. Dawn, thank you very much. In order to keep us on time today, unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to ask any, uh, take any questions from Dawn again. You could submit them to me, I will forward them on. But Dawn, Dawn, thank you for participating today. Um, we greatly appreciate it.